Okay. Okay, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. And then this is perfect. Okay, we are live. Okay. Hi, everyone. Good morning, and nice to see you again. So I'm excited to have Richard Sal Warman with us to um, basically provide our keynote. So Richard is the creator of the Access and Understanding Guides. He's also the creator of the term Information Architecture. He created the TED Med, TED, EG Conf and EG Conferences, as well as the WW Conference. Um, and he is the recent um, recipient of the 2012 Lifetime Achievement um, Award by the Smithsonian uh, Cooper Hewitt National Design Awards. So, Richard, I'll do with you. Hi, Richard. So you're on and ready. I'm on, and you're going to disappear, and then I just talk, correct? Yeah, and you're good. We are good to go. So, thanks. Okay. I'm waiting for you to disappear. Ah, you disappeared. Fine. Well, good morning, everybody, unless it's not morning for some people watching this. I just was speaking with some people in Salerno, and it was in the afternoon. Uh, but one, when they starts a conversation, always says, good morning. You say your own time. We are obviously so self-centered about almost everything, because we only understand something relative to something we understand. And the only thing we have a chance of understanding is ourselves. The, it, it is a fiction to think I know what the audience is thinking or what each of, or any of you are thinking at this moment. It, it would be an arrogance for me to think that. So my way, my path, my journey is to make things that I am interested in understandable to me. Now I know how un-PC that sounds because you all think you want to change the world and you want to do things for everybody else. I understand that. I've gone through that with many people for many, many years and uh, often turn them off and they think I'm abrasive and uncaring. No, I really am caring. I'm caring about doing good work. And good work comes from trusting my ignorance, trusting the, 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 the very real fact that I don't understand much. And my journey is to put something that I'm interested in, some subject, some idea, some answer to some question that I have, and we all have questions to ourselves in the dark of night, in the afternoon, in the bright of sunshine, sitting on the beach, sitting on the toilet. Anytime we have questions that we would like to have answered, and my journey is to answer them if they're really interesting to me so that I can understand them. And I have a much better chance by several magnitudes of judging whether I understand them than whether you understand them. If I say something and you nod, as you do all the time, and I'm not talking to you, Charlene, I'm talking to the great washed and unwashed out there, uh, you nod to each other. How's it going? Keeping busy. How's everything? And you nod, and then you refer to a movie or a book or a, an app or some other technology thing. And instead of feeling stupid or instead of saying, I don't know what the hell you're talking about, you go, uh-huh. So we are in a process throughout our days often of lying to each other. We don't tell the truth. And my passion is to tell the truth. My passion is to ask a question which truly has embedded in it a quest. Word question, quest. The word information, the word inform. The informed quest. The quest to be informed. Two very simple words which we don't use half of. Because most questions are bad questions or speeches. And they really aren't composed so that they want, we want to hear the answer or we listen to an answer. And most information is data and doesn't inform you. So I am, I'm really simple-minded. I really always take the great leap backwards to try to figure out from this land called zero what I understand, what's my journey to understand, what's my mind diagram that takes me on this path that allows me to explain it to myself and in my head 
the fantasy. Uh, that's my phone going off. My phone barks. I'll turn it off. Um, oh boy, it's it's now it's barking and vibrating, uh, which is of course what a dog is. So it, it, I'm sure it's some junk thing. It is. It's a missed junk call, as we have much of our life is missed junk calls. Missed, much of our conversation with each other is missed junk conversation. If you Google me, if somebody's interested enough to Google me, what do you find? I didn't look at it this morning. I should have. It would have been a good thing. But there's somehow between three and 500,000 citations in my Google thing. I mean, some people have 43 million. So mine, I'm, I'm a much lesser figure and below the radar. So let's say there's 400,000 citations if you put Richard Bergman in the Google. So there's about 11 citations per page. So let's say it's 10 because it's easier to make that division. If there's 500, 400,000 and there's 10 on a page, that means there'd be 40,000 pages. And nobody looks past the first page. So the rest of it is junk. It's junk big data. And we think it's a big deal that we can do that on, on Google. And it says, this was searched in 0 0.23 seconds. It's meaningless. The whole Google search thing of citations ad nauseum, huge numbers which aren't organized. So I can't go there and see just, just all my books or, or over time are the most important ones or the ones I think are the most important citations or the reviews. What are reviews? What are things about my kids and my dogs? I can't use it. So you go to Wikipedia, which is usually 30% inaccurate, and that's how we get information. It doesn't really inform us. It's not relative to our journey, our path. So we go to the first page. We leave out 39,000 pages, 50,000 pages, and we think we've done something wonderful, and we've searched Google for somebody. Uh, I'm interested in finding out a path, a journey that answers a question I have. If I was searching Frank Gehry, I'd love to see the 20 or 30 buildings he didn't get to build, or the competitions he lost, or the schemes that led up to his final scheme, the ones he tossed out. I'd like to see his process. I would like to see the corrections in the poetry by C.K. Williams, who's a Pulitzer Prize winning poet, and I'd like to see how he corrected it. Or in the case of uh, uh, David Brook, the, uh, Brooks, the, the, the columnist for the New York Times, I'd like to see the columns, because he writes a column, and then if he doesn't like it, he completely starts again and rewrites it. He doesn't correct it. I'd like to see the columns he threw out. I would like to understand his process. I am interested in how people think. I am interested in conversation. I'm interested in things that haven't changed, not just what everybody embraces as the next thing, the big next thing, the exciting next thing, the Twitter beyond Twitter, the Instagram between Instagram or whatever they call this stuff. A little story I can tell you. I, I did a few TED conferences. I did the first one in 1984. Uh, even though on their history page they say it was always an inv invitation conference, it never was an invitation. There's a lot of mistakes in their history. They, 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 the history on the, web, on, on the TED website is made to make them look good now of what they're doing, but I never had it as an invitation conference. The first people who sent in their money, they were in and that was it. And it was always sold out a year in advance. So in 84, a long time ago, I, uh, I, I, I did the first, uh, the first conference. I never announced, I didn't announce the speakers. Uh, uh, I went out virally. Uh, this is long before the computers, long before Twitter, long before email, long before any of those things. Word gets out virally. My last conference, which you mentioned, the WWW conference, there's been some, a bunch of stories in England, a bunch of stories in France, Forbes, Huffington Post did long stories on it. I didn't have any press passes. I never announced the conference. Uh, people talk to each other. And so in the beginning of this last conference, I said, welcome to the Great Leap Backwards. And the Great Leap Backwards was my reference to the fact that the whole conference could have taken place 2,500 years ago. 
in ancient Greece with Socrates and